Good morning, it's Phil Thatch here, and today I'm at the Blue Blazes Hiking Trail on Moccasin Bend in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, this area is called Moccasin Bend because the Tennessee River goes around this piece of land that I'm standing on, and it kind of is shaped like a shoe, like a moccasin that an Indian might have worn. And this Blue Blazes Trail goes through a wooded area here on Moccasin Bend, and I'm hoping to find some trees that are uh, attractive enough to make a photograph of. It's a little bit foggy this morning, so I'm excited about that. So I need to hurry and try to get to a spot where there's a good composition, I hope, uh, and maybe with some fog still on it. So let's get going. I hiked this trail once a couple of years ago and that's the only time I've ever hiked it and it's about two miles and it loops back onto itself which is really nice so you can start and finish without having to turn around and walk backwards. Um, but it's mostly you know just dense trees right around the trail and there's this one spot that I remember from a couple years ago where it kind of opens up uh, and you probably can't see it in this shot but that's it behind me. So that's where I've got my gear set up. Let's go take a look. Okay, so now I'm in that wooded area that's just, I mean, the trail's only, I don't know, 30 feet, 40 feet that way, but suddenly it opens up. Uh, I, I think maybe sometimes when it rains hard, there could be uh, standing water here. The, there's less grass here and, and just uh, um, a lot of deadfall and some moss and that sort of thing. Uh, but anyway, I've got a composition set up, but first I'm gonna show you what I'm using. I've got the, um, the Z6 and the FTZ adapter and the old uh, 70 to 200 F 2.8 G VR2. Not the latest F mount, and pretty soon there's going to be a Z mount coming. So this one's about to be two generations back of Nikon's top of the line 70 to 200 2.8, but it's still fabulous, just like it was the day I bought it many years ago. I also have a circular polarizer on to try to take a little bit of the glare off the leaves of these trees. So let's take a look now at the settings. Okay, so I'm going to make this shot at ISO 100 f11, 6 seconds, and I am using silent photography to uh, keep that mechanical shutter from shaking the camera. I've got vibration reduction off, single point autofocus single, and I'm focusing on the, on the first tree in the foreground there. We're at about 75 millimeters, and uh, again, I've got the polarizer on and I'm using the remote shutter release. Let's do one more. Okay, I think I'm going to try one at f5.6. Sometimes I like to maybe just have the first tree in focus and let the ones in the background fade off to out of focus. And I never can tell in the field when I'm looking at the back of the screen, I never can tell which way I'll like it. So sometimes I like to shoot it both ways. So let's do an f5.6 version. That slowed my shutter speed down, you know, opened up the aperture so that uh, I need less shutter speed, so I'm down from six seconds to 1.3 seconds. Here we go. Okay, so I ended up using the F5.6 version. It just seemed better in this really kind of cluttered scene to have uh, a lot of the background out of focus. It gave it a better look, in my opinion. So I've got the one shot that I definitely came for in the bag, so maybe. It's time to look around and see if I can find some more compositions. And I think I'm going to stay right in this same area because I remember from walking the entire loop um, a couple years ago that this is the only photogenic looking spot on this entire trail. So uh, I'm going to look around here some more and see what I can find. 
I found another composition that I like. This one's of these three trees that kind of line up together, although they're actually, um, the one on the right is probably a good two or three feet in front of the one on the left, and the one in the center is another 10 or 15 feet back of that. Um, in order to make it look right, I had to lower my tripod, which is uncomfortable for me to be bending over, but fortunately the, the Z6 has the flippy screen so I can look down at it instead of having to bend down to look through it. The settings are really similar, if not identical, to what I was using in the last composition with F11 ISO 106 seconds. Uh, this time I'm probably closer to 120 millimeters. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but if, if you're trying to frame a composition on the back of the screen on a Z6, sometimes you can't see the bottom of the frame because the settings are there, the 6 seconds, the F11, the ISO 100. So you can't really tell where you are in the frame. But if you look through the, uh, through the EVF, you can see the view of the photo without all those settings in the way. And I actually, uh, after I looked through the EVF, I actually recomposed uh, because I had too much foreground in front of those trees when I framed the composition looking at it how we are now on the back of the screen. Okay, let's shoot this thing. Oh, my camera focused on the reflection on the screen during the six second exposure. I made lots of different versions of this, F11, F5.6, F8, and I ended up using F3.5. Now, a lot of my photography heroes, uh, one in particular, Thomas Heaton, his 70-200 is an F4. So in order to get this uh, shallow depth of field, he could not use his 70-200 lens, which is surprising to me. I was just about to leave and I found another composition I like. I'm really close to these four trees. Uh, it's hard to see them uh, in my current shot because I'm trying to be really close to the camera because uh, there's a golf course that's right beside this particular section of this two mile trail and they're doing some leaf blowing over there or something but I'll try to show you the composition here in just a moment. I'm really close to these maybe 10 or 12 feet away and they're all within two or three feet of each other. It's, it's four trees in this little group with the one on the left being completely dead, it, it only goes up about 10 feet before it, it falls off. Uh, I had to clear some deadfall out of the way in front of them. And uh, we're also, we're starting to get a little bit of golden light coming up uh, from the right-hand side. So that kind of helps this picture out. And um, I think I've, I've done this one two or three different ways. This one is F11 for four seconds at ISO 100. And I think I've even done it at 2.8 and F8. I don't know if I've done a 5.6. Maybe we should, maybe we should do a 5.6. Whoops, let's turn the control dial the correct direction there, Phil. I've got the polarizer on still. Focus, still silent. Wow, that color, look at that. Here's the 5.6 shot. So I ended up on this one using the f5.6 shot. I even did this one at f2.8, but that was just too shallow in this instance. So f5.6 worked out, and I really like the golden light on these. Okay, so I completely reshot the first shot because there's better light now. Sun's over that way, coming across like this, and it's it just makes these trees look a little better. Uh, gives them more depth. Uh, I, you know, I, I didn't get the fog that I was hoping for this morning, so this this cross light is uh, the next best thing. So I reshot that first shot. A little bit different, I've got the tripod lower now. I had it lower for, for some of those other shots and I just left it down there and, and I kind of like the way it looked in this composition as well. So I ended up using F6.3 on this one and this one is actually quite a bit different than the first shot. I thought it was the exact same thing, but it's quite a bit different and I ended up cropping it a bunch and making it 16 by nine. Okay, that's gonna do it for me for today from the Blue Blazes Hiking Trail here in Moccasin Bend, Chattanooga, Tennessee. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have a moment, hit the old thumbs up button, maybe subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye. <music>